Thank you, Walter, for the wonderful introduction, and thank you all for uh, joining us today. So, as Walter mentioned, the talk we're going to be giving is titled Racialized Workplaces, Modern Racist Attitudes, and Racial Stereotypes, a Recipe for Race-Based Restaurant Service. So, embedded in this title are the key variables that, uh, that we focus on in this research and the key variables that will, the talk itself will, will center on. So, this uh, research uh, stems from an observation that racial minorities are, black people in particular, are quite vulnerable to discriminatory treatment in consumer markets, the restaurant industry in particular. And the vast majority of my work has always centered on the restaurant industry. So, uh, and that is, uh, this talk is, is no exception. For instance, this Pew uh, poll indicated that, recent Pew poll indicated that about half of black Americans indicated that they are not treated uh, fairly or they receive inequitable treatment in restaurant or stores. In contrast, only about 21% of whites reported that black and whites were not treated uh, equally in these, uh, these settings. And this poll mirrors the results of, of Gallup polls uh, that consistently report about 21% of black Americans, between 19 and 22% of black Americans report having experienced mistreatment in restaurants, uh, bars, uh, stores, or other entertainment venues in the last 30 days. And surprisingly, this statistic is consistent across uh, Gallup polls beginning somewhere around 1997, I believe. So uh, every year this same question is asked and it has been fairly consistent across, the, across time. And it's also comparable to the number of blacks who report experiencing mistreatment uh, at the hands of uh, law enforcement officers. So discreet, mistreatment or discriminatory experiences in this uh, milieu is, uh, is certainly not uncommon based on uh, these uh, self-reports of black Americans. Interestingly enough though, these self-reports of black Americans are substantiated by self-reports from servers themselves. So a alarmingly high number, surprisingly high number in my opinion, of servers themselves report that they discriminate against black Americans, that they use race as a, uh, uh, to inform the quality of service that they deliver. So two particular studies that I've done has, uh, has shown this. So, the first study was of 200 restaurant servers uh, dispersed across 18 restaurants in North Carolina. This was actually my dissertation research. And in this uh, study I found that over half of the uh, participants, or nearly half of the participants, reported that they themselves use race to inform the quality of service that they deliver. And over half of the participants reported observing their uh, uh, co-workers uh, uh, using race to inform the quality of service that they deliver. In a follow-up study of nearly a thousand servers from across the United States, again, it was shown that uh, over half of the participants admitted to racial discrimination. So this kind of flies in the face of a lot of the research on social desirability, these claims that people in today's time are reluctant to admit harboring racist attitudes and or uh, using race to inform how they interact or treat others. So I've consistently uh, shown that servers are uh, willing to admit that this is indeed the case. And the reason why this is the case, or the reason why, uh, certainly one reason why servers are uh, able to uh, admit, or are willing rather, to admit discriminating racially in their service delivery, is that it is oftentimes couched in this economic framework that centers on the uh, server's uh, reliance, economic reliance on tips, voluntary uh, gratuities left at the end of service encounters. So extant evidence indicates that servers perceive blacks to be poor tippers relative to whites. Moreover, there's widespread anecdotal evidence that servers perceive blacks to be uh, less desirable customers or consumers more generally. So they are oftentimes perceived as being demanding, as being uncivil, as being opportunistic in their complaining behaviors, so in other words, lodging false complaints. For instance, one server from, uh, was quoted on a thread that I took offline as saying, 
if I work in the service and if I I've worked in the service industry, you work your tail off and put up with baseless complaints about the food and strength of the drinks, you get run ragged, and at the end of it all, no tip. My coworkers, white and black, used to draw straws to determine who would serve the African American patrons. Once had a party of 15, they ordered 400 worth of booze and wings, they left $2 on the table. It makes sense that business would close during Essence. Why would anyone want to endure it? So Essence is a music festival in New Orleans that, is, uh, that attracts a, a large uh, black American uh, population. So this particular uh, quote was taken from a write-up about the recent decision of some restaurants to close during Essence. And it was, uh, an article about the the backlash associated with that decision, and it was a uh, an article that I actually uh, was quoted in. I was interviewed for that piece, so I ran across this quote in and seeing what how I was actually quoted because it, sometimes that's always a surprise when you uh, if you do an interview with the media. Sometimes it, it, uh, what they actually choose to to quote you as is sometimes not what you would think they would choose to quote you as. But anyways, this sentiment is also illustrated in the uh, meme that my colleague Gerald and I used to uh, advertise this talk today. And I uh, intended to uh, incorporate a picture of that meme into the presentation in case you have forgotten, but uh, otherwise it's on the sheet. Hmm? So you, did you say that quote? No, I did not say that. That's a server that, uh, that said it on the, uh, the thread of the article and the discussion thread. So it was just one of the anonymous people out there contributing. No, so this is not my, my, my words. So in short, there's evidence suggesting that uh, black consumers are not only perceived to be poor tippers, but also uh, perceived to be more difficult consumers to wait on. And so discrimination against black din diners has been interpreted as, in part, an outcome of these perceptions. So servers deliver inferior service to black customers because they are thought to be poor tippers. So this would be equivalent to a same work for less pay type of uh, statistical discrimination and more difficult to wait on. So this would be more work for same pay, right? So either one of these kind of economic arguments would explain in part why servers may be inclined to otherwise give less effort or a uh, uh, lower quality service to their black American clientele relative to their white American clientele. However, there's an, an absence in this literature of, of studies that have seriously interrogated the perceptions themselves. Right? So with regard to perceptions of blacks as poor tippers, there's a fair amount of evidence that servers do indeed uh, uh, harbor such perceptions that such perceptions are not rare, they're uh, fairly pervasive across the full service restaurant industry. How many of you have worked in the restaurant industry? How many of you are familiar with that, that sentiment? Yeah, so people who have had experience working in, in the industry uh, uh, typically can uh, support uh, the pervasiveness of this, of this sentiment. But the, the, the sentiment has also been expressed a lot in the popular press. It's showed up in, in big screen movies. Uh, it's showed up on the small screen, different uh, uh, TV shows that have kind of broached the, the topic or uh, disseminated in some form or fashion the, uh, the server's perceptions. But even this literature, so there's uh, several studies, uh, several of my own studies have, uh, have been devoted to kind of establishing how pervasive these uh, perceptions or this sentiment is. But the problem is is that none of these studies really allow us to gauge whether server perceptions are in fact accurate or whether they are in fact exaggerated. And so these studies that have looked at server perceptions have typically asked servers to report uh, the quality of tipping of various racial groups. And so they've typically measured perceptions of tipping quality using an ordinal level measure, so uh, a Likert style scale. So the, uh, uh, the scale measuring perceptions typically would be something like ranging from very poor to very good. Uh, below average to above average. Uh, below 15%, above 15%. So it's these categorical scales as opposed to a continuous uh, uh, scale. 
So on the other hand, studies that have actually looked at racial differences in tipping, and uh, as I'll show uh, a little bit later in this talk, there's been quite a few of them. They typically measure racial differences in tipping uh, with actual tip amounts or uh, in most cases actually a percentage of the bill. Right? So this is a continuous measure. So there's evidence uh, to suggest that blacks do indeed tip less than whites. Right? And that ev evidence is, uh, is fairly robust, as again I'll establish momentarily. But it's difficult to take that evidence and overlay it with evidence of server's perception because of the different metrics used. Right? Everyone follow me? So it's difficult to tell, even though we can uh, establish that many more servers perceive blacks to be uh, poor tippers relative to white, it's difficult to tell whether they are picking up on an empirical reality, right? or rather if their perceptions are grossly exaggerated. To the degree that behavior is shaped, namely, by perceptions as opposed to the objective reality, interrogating the perceptions themselves becomes, in my opinion, in our opinion, an, an important endeavor. So that's in a kind of a, a partial goal of this, uh, this research. And in terms of perceptions of, of black American consumers or black American clientele as being demanding and civil or opportunistic, that's completely, uh, that evidence is completely anecdotal. If you look online, you'll find all kinds of evidence uh, suggesting such. But there's been no studies uh, that I'm aware of that have adequately uh, attempted to establish whether servers do on average harbor this perception, or rather whether this perception is, is being expressed uh, by a vocal minority of, uh, of racist people online. Right? So those, uh, those are, are, are two shortcomings with the existing research. Furthermore, most of the existing research in this area has used cross-sectional or correlational designs, so it's really difficult to tease out causality when, uh, when you're taking a snapshot in time where you do not have any capacity to assess temporal order or time order or, uh, or sequencing of uh, events. And moreover, no studies have been done that have really looked at the process uh, uh, linking customers' race with actual discriminatory treatment. So these are all shortcomings in this literature that, that we uh, are, are, are speaking to or addressing uh, to some degree with this current uh, study. So two particular things that we posit are going to inform server perceptions and, and, and more broadly going to inform the process by which uh, servers uh, racially discriminate in their service. Uh, first is the uh, organizational culture or the climate of the restaurants in which servers work. So we know from existing research that restaurants can be, certainly not all restaurants, but a, a sizable proportion of restaurants are highly racialized or, or there's evidence of this uh, of, of, of a highly racialized climate in many restaurants characterized by and anti-minority beliefs that are reflected in racialized and stereotypical language that servers use to uh, privately and sometimes not so privately uh, uh, disparage a black clientele. And this also entails observing other servers uh, treating black clientele uh, inequitably. Right? So for instance, going back to my dissertation research, it was found that 63% of the sample reported observing coworkers making racist comments. 26% uh, reported observing their managers making racist comments. And over 75% reported observing their coworkers uh, utilizing coded language in the workplace. So in the restaurant, the servers have come up with all kinds of coded or clever ways to refer to uh, clientele uh, without uh, outsiders necessarily being able to identify what they're talking about. So this is particularly prominent when it comes to referring to black consumers, right? So the servers have a bunch of, of, uh, of coded words that they use to uh, discuss amongst themselves the race of the, their clientele. So as we know from sociology, when this racially coded language is embedded in uh, primarily, uh, although certainly not exclusively, white minds, it and its associated concepts often guide everyday thinking and behavior. 
So we've identified workplace culture as being an important variable uh, in this process that is likely to shape perceptions and then subsequently shape the behavior of servers. And we also identify modern racist attitudes as an important factor that has uh, uh, been neglected in, uh, in this uh, area of research. So whites who endorse modern racist attitudes tend to believe that discrimination against blacks is no longer a problem. It was a problem in the past, but it's no longer a problem today. They tend to believe that blacks are too pushy and demanding for their rights. They tend to believe that blacks' pushiness is manifest in the use of unfair tactics. And they tend to believe that the advances gained by blacks are undeserved. So these kind of broad characteristics of uh, modern racist uh, ideology, you should already be seeing how they are very reminiscent of some of the uh, perceptions of blacks as being undesirable consumers that we've already delineated, right? Uh, being opportunistic in their complaining behavior, being demanding, demanding or too pushy, uh, being incivil. So we suspect that the individuals who harbor these racist, uh, modern racist attitudes more broadly, that these attitudes are likely to become manifest in their perceptions of clientele. So the uh, attitudes more broadly are, li are, are likely to become manifest in a, in a very localized context, in this case, their, their workplace. So that kind of outlines some of the, uh, the variables that this uh, research uh, centers on. And so these are our four main research questions that drive the research. So first, do servers on average overstate different, the actual difference in black and white customers' tipping practices? Are their perceptions of difference conditioned by working in a racialized workplace and harboring modern racist attitudes? So first and foremost, we just want to know whether their perceptions of difference were indeed accurate or exaggerated uh, or reflections of the empirical reality. And then we want to know whether servers who work in a racist environment or harbor uh, contemporary racist ideals are the ones who are most likely to exaggerate, right, the, the uh, uh, tipping differential. Second, do servers on average perceive black consumers to be more demanding, uncivil, and opportunistic in their complaining behavior? So just on average, we wanted to know whether this is the case. And as I mentioned before, to date, there's no research really that has looked at whether this, uh, this sentiment towards blacks' behavior, as opposed to their, their tipping behavior, but their dining behaviors, is actually uh, quite common, or rather if it's uh, uh, quite rare and uh, restricted to a small segment of the, the populace. So secondly, to the degree that, that uh, uh, whether there are or are not average differences in, uh, in how consumers are perceived to behave at the table, we're, we're interested in seeing whether individuals who worked in a racist culture or alternatively harbored contemporary racist uh, attitudes were the ones who were most likely to report this sentiment, right? Third, do servers racially discriminate in the delivery of service because they perceive blacks to be poor tippers and more difficult consumers to weigh on relative to white, their white counterparts? So this is getting into the process. So we're interested in testing the actual process that links customers' uh, race with the service that they receive in restaurants. And then finally, if this is the case, if servers discriminate because they perceive blacks to be more demanding and, uh, and worse tippers, are these indirect effects of customers' race on service quality through these perceptions, do those indirect, indirect effects themselves vary across levels of racist culture and racist attitudes, right? Hmm? So what do you mean uh, in the first sentence, overstating actual differences? Do they exaggerate? Okay. Do they harbor exaggerated uh, attitudes towards the difference, right? All right, you can feel free to ask questions whenever, Joe. I'm fine with just going that way. So how are we going to address these questions? So we uh, analyzed data derived from a, a, an anonymous survey that was administered to members of, of uh, uh, Facebook communities that were 
uh, designed to provide a virtual forum for restaurant servers to commensurate with one another. So to digress briefly and give you a little bit of background, uh, this, uh, prior to this study I was actually beginning to embark on another study and then I, I, uh, I hooked up with Gerald who was interested in, in doing some research and, and, uh, and so he said why don't we post a survey to these Facebook communities. And I, uh, and certainly those who know me, I am certainly not a very technologically savvy. I'm not on Facebook. I don't know uh, the etiquette of Facebook. I don't know anything about that. So my response was, awesome. Uh, let's do it. And you can handle, you can handle it. And uh, so, so he set out, he actually set out creating his own Facebook community because he himself is a restaurant server. And so he, he, he went about recruiting people to join this Facebook community. And that initially was going to be our, our pool from which we would sample. And that worked, but didn't work quite as well as we anticipated. We didn't get as many respondents as we otherwise desired. So then he started joining all these other closed book face communities and then infiltrating those communities and posting the, the getting permission to post a link and, uh, and then subsequently doing so. So this is how we ended up getting a, a, a sample of restaurant servers. So we ended up in the analysis, depending on what analysis uh, uh, we're looking at, we have somewhere between 358 and 364 servers. The sample is primarily white and female. So it's about 85% white, 85% female. So this is not representative, a representative sample of the industry. The industry has about 70% uh, female, so we're not too far off on on that, but uh, we are, uh, are, are quite a ways off on, on the, uh, the whiteness of our sample. But nevertheless, this is what we have to work with. And we are less concerned with the uh, lack of representativeness because this study is actually a survey experiment. So we uh, are able to uh, measure our independent variable, which is the customer's race, by presenting a hypothetical dining vignette and then randomly manipulating the race of the customer in that vignette. So given randomization, we're confident, and, 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 and we in fact have confirmed, that everything is equal between the two groups, right? Everything is equal with the exception of what? What? You said you changed the race of the customer? But yeah, so that's the only thing different. The only thing different between these two, uh, uh, the, the sample of folks who, who got the white customer and the sample of folks who got the black customer is in fact the race of the customer. So this is the, the dining vignette that we included. So we uh, specified the night, we specified the volume of, uh, of the restaurant, we specified the uh, customer's gender, we specified the customer's dress, we specified the customer's age. The only thing we manipulated was the customer's race. And then so following that, we asked a series of questions designed to tap into subtle differences in uh, prospective reports of service quality. So these are <coughs> servers reports of the service quality they would give in this hypothetical scenario. And so this is a summated index uh, measuring the number of service enhancing behaviors that respondents report they would be extremely likely to extend to the table depicted in the hypothetical scenario. So the, each individual item or indicator of service quality was on a Likert scale range from extremely likely to extremely unlikely. The vast majority of folks report that they are likely to extend uh, positive hospitality enhancing behaviors and the vast majority report that they are extremely unlikely to extend negative type of behaviors. So this is pretty consistent with what we know about restaurant service. The vast majority of the time you go out, you get pretty good service, right? It may not be phenomenal, but uh, it uh, uh, tends to be acceptable. So what we did then is, is take the, just the extremely likely responses and we dichotomized each one of those indicators and then created a summated scale. So to get a 15 on the scale, you would have to have indicated that you would be extremely uh, likely to extend each positive uh, behavior to the clientele and, and extremely unlikely to extend each negative uh, behavior to the clientele. 
So some examples here, as you can see, make every effort to greet this table as soon as possible. Go the extra mile to make sure this table has a great dining experience. Make every effort to ensure that this table gets all the drink refills that they need. So there were 15 of these indicators of, uh, of subtle hospitality enhancing behaviors. So I call service quality the dependent variable because in the final model that we present, it's going to be the dependent variable. So the mediators in the final model, uh, as I've implied, include these perceptions of bad consumer behaviors or perceptions of uh, customers' uh, tipping behavior. So perceptions of bad consumer behaviors is a 20 item summated and averaged index. So some examples, as you can see there parenthetically, make what you think is a false or unjustified complaint about the taste and preparation of food, be overly demanding and act like they are the only table in your section, make condescending comments and treat you like you are inferior. So again, these were measured on a uh, Likert scale, ranging from extremely likely to extremely uh, unlikely. And then predict the tip amount after they were asked questions about the likelihood of consumers engaging in these various uh, undesirable behaviors. They were asked to uh, indicate the tip that the table would, they would predict the table to leave assuming that the table appeared satisfied with their dining experience. And so, Ann had a bill of $95. So this is a, a continuous measure of respondents' uh, uh, predictions of consumers' tipping behaviors. So this uh, deviates from most of the existing studies that have aimed to basically document the pervasiveness of, uh, of negative perceptions towards uh, blacks tipping. And then the two moderators in our, in our, what will ultimately be our process model is uh, modern racist attitudes and a racialized workplace culture. So modern racist attitudes is measured with a nine item modified version of the modern, modern racism scale. For example, it's easy to understand the anger of black people in America. Blacks are too demanding in their push for social change. Blacks complain more than they should about their situation in society. Over the past few years, the government and news media have given blacks more respect than they deserve. So these items all are tapping those characteristics of modern racist ideals that we reviewed previously. Racist workplace culture is measured with a seven item uh, averaged index. For example, the respondents were asked how common it is in their workplace to observe derogatory terms or phases to, phrases to describe black customers. How common it is to see uh, uh, co-workers avoiding black customers, uh, using avoidance tactics to uh, avoid having to wait on black customers. In my restaurant, black customers don't always get the same level of service white customers, so this is observed discrimination. And jokes about black customers are common in my restaurant. So the first question entails whether servers harbor exaggerated understanding of uh, black and white tipping differences. So to test this idea, we have to first have a good estimate of the actual black-white tipping difference. And so this is a table, and I know it's small print, so you don't even have to read it. I'll just summarize it. But these are all the studies that have documented uh, a black-white tipping differential. So in their uh, totality, this includes over a thousand black consumers and approaching uh, 4,000 white consumers. So these studies in their totality represent over 14 independent samples. They have used a variety of different methodologies. So uh, some of these studies are based on uh, customers' uh, self-reported tipping behaviors uh, after they leave a restaurant. So uh, exit surveys have been done. The first study that I did here in Detroit was actually an ex exit survey of Union Street in Midtown. So I literally stood out there, and as, pro uh, uh, as customers left, I would approach them and, and ask if they would participate in the study. So several researchers have, have, uh, have studied this racial tipping differences using this method. Uh, there's also studies that have used server records. So you, uh, researchers have co-opted restaurant servers and asked them to record the tips of their clientele, uh, along with other uh, basic demographic characteristics, including race. These studies have been done, one study was done using a, a, a randomized national telephone survey. Other studies have been done using uh, 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 surveys of, of large consumer panels 
where they will present the respondent with a scenario and ask them to report how much they would tip in that scenario. So it's fairly, uh, I'm fairly confident that this difference is, 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 is not simply a reflection of uh, racist servers, right? I'm fairly confident based on the evidence that blacks do in fact tip less than whites, right? On average, on average. But if you calculate the mean percent tip for blacks across all these studies, right, and the mean percent tip for whites across all these studies, you get a difference of about 3.38 percentage points. So a notable difference, right, but one that I've always suspected, and in, in some of my previous work I've uh, argued that uh, doesn't seem to reflect the strength of servers' uh, animus towards black tipping, right? Particularly in some restaurants. So I've always gotten the sense that they, uh, uh, many servers have an exaggerated understanding of the actual tipping differential. But previously, there was no way for me to really make a strong case as such because as I've already mentioned, it's difficult to compare this data with the existing data on server's perceptions because of the use of different metrics. So keep that in mind. So right now, we know that a reasonable estimate of the difference, of the actual difference, and again, this is just an estimate, is about 3.38 percentage points. So let's see how that stacks up to server's predictions of black and white clientele's tipping practices. So you can see over here on the left, this is the actual difference, 3.38%. And this is the predicted difference in our sample of restaurant servers. So they're predicting on average a difference of 6.81 percentage points. All right? So twofold the actual difference. So on average, these data would suggest that servers are grossly overestimating what the actual difference is, all right? So then the next question was, are server perceptions of interracial tipping differences conditioned by working in a racist environment or harboring racist uh, attitudes? So what we did is, is estimate a simple OLS regression model predicting tip percent, and this is our experimental manipulation. So uh, in this case, black is coded one, and then we include an interaction with our condition with racist culture and racist uh, uh, ideals. And in both cases, they're highly significant. So what's that look like visually? So this is what it looks like visually. So amongst folks, amongst highly racist folks and low, low racist folks and average racist folks, there's basically no effect of of uh, racist attitudes on the amount that white clientele are predicted to tip, right? So the folks who got the white condition, the folks who had the hypothetical scenario that included a, a, a group of white customers, there's no relationship between tips and racist attitudes. Among the groups, the group that had the black table though, there's a strong negative relationship between racist attitudes and uh, predicted tips, creating a very large gap. And we see the, almost the exact same pattern over here with racist workplace culture. So if you work in a racist workplace culture, uh, there is in essence no relationship between that and what you're going to predict whites will tip. But there is a strong negative relationship between working in such a culture and what you predict blacks to tip. Again, creating this very exaggerated, uh, perceived black-white tipping differential. So another way to visualize this, which is, I think is a better way to visualize this, is looking at the conditional effects of race on the predicted tip at various levels of uh, our moderators, in this case, racist attitudes and racist culture. So you can see, if you follow these dark black ones, or in fact, if you follow any color across, this is basically the effect of going from negative two, negative three, to negative seven. This, that would be the effect of working in a racist workplace culture, 
right? And anyone in within is going to be the effect of uh, racist attitudes. So within low racist cultures, the effect of racist attitudes is that it goes from negative two, negative four, negative six. And these can literally be interpreted as predicted difference in tip percent. So in other words, folks who work in a low racist environment but who harbor racist ideals predict blacks to tip 6.8 percentage points lower than their white counterparts. And so only in two cases, those who reject racist assertions and who work in a, a, race, a, a, a low racialized culture, and then those who have average uh, levels of racist culture but likewise reject contemporary racist ideals, only in these two cases are the estimated differences uh, fairly reasonably uh, reflections of the actual tipping difference. And the actual tipping difference is represented with this solid black line, right? In all other cases, there's evidence of exaggeration. If we get out over here to high racist environments and, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and racists, so racists who work in racialized environments, you see the predicted difference is just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous uh, relative to the actual black-white tipping difference. So this provides uh, strong uh, evidence that uh, many servers do in fact harbor uh, exaggerated uh, perceptions of black-white tipping differences. And this is particularly the case amongst those who work in either or uh, a racist workplace or uh, a uh, harbor racist uh, ideas. So the next question is, how about behaviors? And this is the first time that this has really even been looked at uh, scientifically. So we want to know if on average there are differences in how servers perceive uh, consumer demandingness, incivility, and opportunistic complaining. And you see that, again, we find that there is a statistically significant difference in uh, perceptions of these undesirable consumer behaviors. <coughs> I've blown up the y-axis to make the difference look much larger than it actually is, so keep that in mind. But nevertheless, there is a difference. 2.45 on this scale versus 2.89 on the undesirable consumer behavior scale. So on average, all else being equal, right, because we employed it in experimental design here, all else being equal, there is a statistically significant difference in uh, perceptions of undesirable behavior such that blacks are perceived to be more likely to engage in these behaviors uh, relative to their white counterparts. So then again, we want to see <coughs> whether this, uh, this is particularly the case amongst racists or those working in a racist environment. So we conduct the same analysis, although in this case we're predicting uh, bad consumer behaviors. And so here's the, the first visual, as was the case in the, the previous model predicting uh, percent tip. You see that amongst those, amongst those who had the white condition, there's a slight but non-significant negative effect of racist attitudes on perceived consumer behaviors. And this is the same with culture, but there is a positive effect of racist attitudes <coughs> on perceptions of undesirable uh, consumer behaviors amongst those who had the black uh, customers. And this is also the case here uh, with racist workplace culture. So this is a, a, another visual of, uh, of this relationship. And of course, uh, at this point, there is no evidence uh, of uh, any racial difference in consumer behavior. And in fact, I would be uh, uh, surprised if, if uh, there is a difference in reality. Certainly not a difference across uh, all of these items, right? Incivility, opportunities to complaining, uh, demanding this. But you can see here that amongst non-racists who, who work in a, in a low racialized workplace, there's actually a negative effect. So these folks 
actually are reporting that whites report are more likely to exhibit these behaviors. So they're rejecting these, uh, these uh, racist stereotypes, right? But as you go up, you see this is also the case here. But as you go up, you see a strong uh, conditional effect of, of race uh, by racist culture and harboring racist attitudes. So amongst racists working in a racist environment, there is over a two point uh, difference on this scale measuring perceptions of undesirable consumer behaviors. Again, consistent with uh, uh, our inclination that servers are exaggerated, harbor exaggerated perceptions, and those perceptions are strongly influenced by their environment and by uh, their uh, more holistic attitudes towards race in America. All right. So then we get in to the process. So the ultimate goal of this research is to begin testing uh, processes, all right, explanatory processes. And because of our experimental design, our, our, our work is, is, is well positioned to, to, to test causal explanations. So this first model is a simple uh, uh, mediation process, so we predict that the effect of race on service quality will be mediated by these perceptions of, of consumers' behaviors and, and tipping. And we, down here you can see these are the indirect effects. So there is a significant indirect effect of race on service quality through both perceptions of undesirable dining behaviors and through predicted tip amount. Both of those indirect effects combined is about 1.51. So again, a a highly significant and, and, and notable indirect effect. It's interesting, and we can return to it later though, but there, there's a positive leftover uh, direct effect of race on service quality, suggesting that net of this mediation process that culminates in worse service to black Americans, there's actually a propensity for servers to give better service to black Americans than their white counterparts, right? And this is again, uh, it's a, a leftover uh, direct effect. I'm reluctant to use the, 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 the verb is direct effect because it's really just a leftover uh, effect. Hmm? Yeah, I, I first thought I would go to a movie and afterward we go to a restaurant. It is very dark in African American we eat. And he always mentioned to me that when we go out, the waiter, waitress, would always ask me first, him second. They order, he order, but they would always look at me, even when he was ordering. And I thought, uh, and when I, when he pointed that out, the more I noticed, now, I, when you talk about service quality, I'm thinking, well, that's pretty obvious, and this is in the north, yeah. but you mentioned in the south in North Carolina, mm -hmm. and I was recently in North Carolina, and I, it's a, I, I can't even imagine. So it got me to thinking, you're talking about service quality overall in that respect, right? Mm -hmm. and, and this is an example of an everyday reality. So these perceptions that white people get, don't you, until it's pointed out to you, you don't even no, no. know. Yeah, yeah. White uh, white folks are, are have the luxury of being uh, oblivious to to a lot of these uh, subtle manifestations of of, uh, of contemporary and uh, past racism. But I definitely that's an interesting. I'm glad you pointed that that out because that's a, an interesting uh, indicator of kind of subtle differences in the way consumers are treated that I had never thought about. All right. So basically, the, the takeaway point with uh, with this model is that. Uh, consistent with our predictions, uh, servers do in fact report that they would give blacks less quality service because uh, they are perceived to be uh, more difficult and to tip plus. So this is the ultimate model that, that we, we want to estimate. So this is a, uh, referred to as a moderated mediation model. So what the model is, indicates is that these indirect effects that we just outlined here, we're going to predict that those indirect effects are themselves conditioned by uh, our moderators, harboring racist attitudes or working in a racist workplace culture. So we'd expect that that mediation process that we just 
uh, empirically sh showed is going to be much stronger for people who are racist and for people who work in a racist workplace. So we test this model and, uh, and we find support for it. And in fact, this is, I find more support for this uh, theoretically deduced model than any other model I've ever tested. I was shocked that this turned out the way it did. Uh, typically, things don't turn out uh, exactly how you predict them to turn out. But in this case, you see that, as we've already identified, there's interactions predicting our mediators. And we also see that our mediators are significantly related to our outcome, in this case, service quality. We still see this positive leftover direct effect. And so, consistent with our predictions, we find that these indirect effects are, in fact, conditioned by our moderators. So this is the statistical stuff, but we can jump right to the, the visualization of these indirect effects. So these are estimated indirect effects right, at various levels of our moderators. So using the exact same uh, logic that we've used in the previous illustrations, if you focus within color across, you're looking at the effects of racist culture. If you look within any given level of culture, this is going to be the effect of, of racist attitudes. So you see that there is a significant negative indirect effect amongst those who harbor, who reject contemporary racist attitudes and who do not work in a racist workplace, right? So this is consistent with the economic explanation for racial discrimination that has been put forth in the literature. All right, so this is suggesting even folks, even servers who aren't racist, who don't work in a racist environment, do have a propensity to give blacks slightly worse service, or less good, if you will, than uh, uh, because of the perceptions of, of, uh, of tipping. Right? But if you jump out here to the other extreme, though, folks who are racist, who work in a racist environment, these indirect effects are much stronger, much more pronounced. So they are discriminating, uh, much more likely to be discriminating based on these perceptions that we know themselves are influenced by the environment and these more holistic uh, attitudes towards uh, race in America. So then we look at the indirect effects through perceptions of undesirable consumer behaviors. And we see, as was kind of foreshadowed earlier, that amongst those who are not racist and who do not work in a racist environment, they are rejecting these stereotypical conceptions of black consumers. And as a result, there's actually a significant positive indirect effect. So they are giving blacks better service precisely because they are not endorsing these localized racist or racialized stereotypes towards black consumers. But again, as we move towards here, you see that there is a consistent negative effect and of course the strongest negative indirect effect is amongst those who harbor racist attitudes and work in a racist environment. So, what are the conclusions? Servers' racist attitudes become manifest in their perceptions of racial differences in consumer behaviors. Perceptions of racial differences in consumer behaviors also stem from the racialization of restaurant workplaces. And these perceptions are shown to encourage servers to discriminate against black clientele. So future directions, so one thing that is, a, is, a, is interesting, there's of course a ton of future directions, uh, but one thing that's interesting is what factors account for the net positive effect of customers' race on reported service quality. So, we have a couple, uh, a couple of different uh, theories, uh, one of which is that a segment of servers, even those who are racist or work in a racist environment, are in, in some cases likely to overcompensate. So for instance, if they predict a, a, a low tip, they may be inclined uh, because of economic necessity, uh, certainly not because they are uh, overly uh, sensitive to racial inequality and a history of racial oppression, but because they are economically reliant on tips, they may overcompensate. They may try to give black customers better service in an attempt to garner a better tip than they otherwise would in the presence of, of uh, if not mistreatment, uh, 
less treatment, if you will. <clears throat> uh, and then uh, another, uh, another more uh, uh, statistical uh, uh, explanation would be social desirability. So you, you have some folks that, that, that may be over-reporting the service that they would give uh, uh, black clientele because of social desirability. I don't think this is a, a, the dominant explanation because there is evidence of social desirability in these data. The uh, relationship between condition, and there is a, a relationship between condition, the experimental condition, and racist attitudes such that folks in the black condition report slightly, albeit significantly, uh, lower levels of racist attitudes, right? And the only thing that would explain that is social desirability. Uh, it could be due to chance and chance alone, but a more likely scenario is that folks that got the black condition, by the time they got to the racist attitudes, they were keyed into the, the nature of the study and they underreported their true attitudes. But we re-estimated the whole model uh, using a, a, a residual measure after we parceled out the association between customer's race or condition and, uh, and racist attitudes, and the model is basically unchanged. So it's still a, 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 an empirical question what uh, might explain that. Future directions also include replication efforts, and we actually just fielded a replication project, so uh, uh, that data is yet to be analyzed, but we are going to try to replicate this whole process in an independent sample and to the degree that we are able to do so would uh, lend uh, additional credence to our findings here. So our findings are sound in terms of causality, but the problem with all experiments is uh, issues with external validity. Whether these findings would actually generalize to another uh, sample of servers is, uh, is an outstanding question. There, the reason we're replicating is there's concern that the Facebook sample may not be uh, the same as servers writ large. All right, I'm assuming we have plenty of time for questions. Get into what this the soccer the game says overtime. So we have uh, 15 minutes of overtime <laughs> across here. <clears throat> I know from your from your earlier studies, you uh, you went to Diner yourself and and asked um, patrons about their actual their actual type of behaviors. Did you ask them about um, when you did that when you conducted that study? Did you um, also get them to report on the service they got? Mm -hmm. Because what does the way I the way I look at it is kind of like a cir a circular logic type mm -hmm. of thing. Like so um, so for example, if servers pre predict or perceive that they're going to receive le oh, uh, less t less in tips from black patrons, right? So they indeed give uh, worse, uh, worse service. Mm -hmm. But as the black patron, I'm getting worse service and, gratu and, and service is related to gratuity, gratuity is related to service, right? Mm -hmm. So if I perceive, if I perceive that service is bad, I'm going to give a less, of a, less of a tip. So have you actually considered like bringing both of these together, and actually said that, that that's if after that that service um, that 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 the server gives is, is of lower quality, if the uh, actual patron notices that and that affects their tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So like a self employed problem thing. Yeah, that's a. I mean, in, in an ideal world, we we'd be doing dyadic studies mm -hmm. where we're surveying consumers and surveying uh, servers. Uh, dyadic studies are. are Difficult to execute, but uh, but that definitely would be an interesting way to kind of tease that out. But more generally, to address your question, the studies that have documented, uh, including my own, the black-white difference in tipping, uh, control for uh, consumer-reported service quality, either do so in exit surveys by asking them to rate the service friendliness, the uh, the atmosphere, and the food quality, or alternatively, they'll control for it by way of the question itself. So they'll specify in like an online survey, they'll specify to assume that you had uh, uh, good, good service. service. Mm -hmm. And so the black white tipping differential cannot uh, readily be explained. The process that you just described uh, most certainly does happen. Uh, I mean, it, it certainly does happen, but it's not the, uh, the sole explanation for the differential, or at least it doesn't appear to be. Uh, given the way studies have typically measured service quality, 
and there's a, that's a whole another kind of area kind of the, that I'm interested in is trying to identify uh, what discrimination looks like in this context and under what conditions uh, black consumers are able to recognize uh, uh, the discriminatory treatment. And, and, and a, on a related note, the black white tipping differential also does not, the most, uh, one of the most obvious uh, uh, culprits of the differential would be income differentials. Income. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it also it continues to be observed controlling for income. So it is attenuated slightly, but uh, so that is a, a partial causal factor, but it's, a, it's not the dominant causal factor. So the, another causal factor that's been uh, shown uh, to have support empirically is that black folk are just less familiar with this, what, what I call the white 15% tipping norm, 15 to 20% tipping norm. Mm -hmm. So there's a variety of reasons why that would be the, the case. Black, uh, uh, black Americans are less likely to work in, in tip dependent positions, particularly as servers. So there's a lot of uh, racial segment, segmentization in the restaurant industry itself. You go into restaurants, the front of the house, you're going to see many more white faces. When you go into the back of the house or the kitchen, you're, you're going to see many more faces of color. And, uh, and, uh, and also, uh, 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 black Americans are, are less likely to dine in full service restaurants compared to their uh, white counterparts. And in part, that's a manifestation of the income differences, differences in disposable income as, as well. Does that get your question? Yeah, it does. Just in regards to general, it would be making it generalizable. Um, I know that you guys answer these closed Facebook groups. And I know that you talked about past studies being a little more nationwide and things of that sort of nature in New York, it was particular to Detroit and also South Carolina. Now with those closed Facebook groups, were they specific to a demographical area or did you guys kind of like have the opportunity to share them so you can kind of like go worldwide or whatever the case may be? I mean, not worldwide, but nationwide. Um, how, how did that work out for you all as far as like you know, the communities? The Facebook groups were closed communities uh, mm -hmm. of varying uh, levels of membership where people would go and share uh, memes related to server life or restaurant life, um, share happy stories and uh, uh, happy experiences and also share, um, kind of band together and bond on uh, shared misery. So it, it was really all about just having this experience to, um, to uh, Conversate about being a restaurant employee, or in, and actually, in the majority of these groups, it was a server, specifically a waiter or waitress. And was just, it limited to Michigan, or did no? It, okay, this was right. uh, the, I, the bulk of my <clears throat> initial um, Facebook group that I, I built brick by group brick was Michigan based. Okay, um, these Facebook communities were, were national. Uh, and so we're, we have a very broad geographic uh, uh, sample. Okay. So why is it just a restaurant environment? Like, what's its main? What do you think? Like, uh, society has to worry about it. I guess. Like, just why? Like, what's your main reason for restaurants? What made you choose it? I mean, that's a, so my response to that would be twofold. And, and uh, on the one hand, it seems to, you seem to be asking why I'm interested in, in this type of research. So that stems back uh, and tells more of a personal story. So when I was uh, young, my mother was a restaurant server, and I spent a lot of time in restaurants. So when I went to grad school, uh, professors began encouraging me to think about what my research agenda was going to be. And of course, as a first year master's student, I had, uh, had no idea what a research agenda entailed, not, al not alone what mine was going to be. So uh, it's, uh, as uh, oftentimes is the case, the advice was to uh, choose something that you are, have some uh, familiarity with. So that's kind of what led me into the restaurant industry as a, as a social milieu. To, to do research. Uh, initially, I was interested in, and still am, uh, interested in servers kind of being the uh, victims of exploitative and alienating processes. And, uh, and that, I did my thesis work on that, and then I transitioned and became interested in consumer racial discrimination for my dissertation. And so, why is it a problem more broadly? I mean, my response to that was that it's a 
uh, any, any... Like, I know racism is a problem, I'm not saying that. No, but, I mean, you have a good point. Your point's well taken. I mean, relative to some of the other problems centering on race relations in, Amer in America, uh, I would be the first to admit that uh, racial discrimination in restaurant service uh, probably pales in, or does pale in comparison, right? But at the same sense, uh, like any discrimination in any milieu, left uh, uninterrogated, it's just uh, going to continue to uh, be as it always was, right? So I think that it's important to, to do this research in, in order to understand it and then uh, ultimately uh, uh, people in positions to use the information and it's my hope that they use it in such a way as to uh, discourage uh, racial mistreatment or racial inequities in, in service. Thank you. I'm actually kind of really glad that you did this because ever since I was a kid, I would go to a restaurant. And each time I would go, I would actually see discrimination. Like each time I would go to a restaurant. And I would think to myself like, wow, this is so wrong. But it's being seen as kind of like it's normal. It's getting kind of brushed away. Even the people who are getting discriminated against, I'm sure they were getting upset, but they weren't making it a big deal or a big fuss. So instead, I was saying they're just getting so furious, like why? So I'm actually really glad that you did this. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought it was interesting in a way that because food is a very intimate thing. I mean, when you're eating with someone, you're 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 developing a deeper bond. And anything that would interfere with that would kind of like, <clears throat> you know, it would kind of exaggerate that kind of thing. And I think it's interesting that it's uh, over food and how people bond with each other. You know, because going to a restaurant is just a friendly occasion. And when you interfere with that, you're playing with a whole bunch of other things going on. And it seems to me that that does something, particularly when you racialize that, some deep things are going on because, well, I, again, I think food is a bonding thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I agree. That, and that kind of triggers me to go back to a previous comment, too, in, in terms of uh, what actually explains the uh, racial different differences in tipping. One explanation that, that uh, one of the uh, papers that uh, Dr. Edwards uh, uh, read off in the, in, the, in the beginning of the talk, the one about differences in reactions to dissatisfaction. So one thing that's going on is that based on the results of that particular piece of research is that uh, when most of the time you go to restaurants, regardless of race, you get good service, right? And so contemporary discrimination is in and of itself difficult to detect. But when you get bad service, what we show is that uh, black Americans are more reactive. They respond more punitively it, by way of tipping the server less than comparable whites. And that's, a, I mean, what we would expect because black Americans have as an attribution uh, their race, where white Americans have a bunch of attributions, but one tends not to be their race. So when you get, when black Americans get bad uh, service, uh, given their cumulative experiences, given their understanding of uh, the uh, history of, of a racial hierarchy, they are left to wonder, right, whether that bad service was in fact because they were black or something else. And so we contend that that uh, triggers this kind of reaction that is much more uh, uh, potent or much more punitive in terms of how it manifests in their tipping than white. So that also is likely to uh, explain some of the differential and also would explain uh, some of the exaggerated perceptions that servers harbor. So they may not be, the perceptions may be tapping less understanding of the average difference and more tapping the, uh, the instances that they remember where the customer, whether the server was aware of it or not, was not satisfied and they got grossly under tip, like a zero tip or a $2 tip. Right? And those might be the instances that they're 
are thinking about when they respond to questionnaires asking them about predicted tips? <clears throat> well, that's happening, and it could be too that <clears throat> even though the gap between black and white tip, tipping is not large, you can't move forward it. Percentage points, so it's not, it's not huge. <clears throat> but that's 3.5 percent, right? Not not three dollars, not three dollars. Percentage points. Okay, yeah. so not, not not a huge difference. So blacks on average look like they tip right around 50 percent, and and whites are. 17, just under 15, and whites are 17 and a half. That's the average. <coughs> so it's not it's in, yeah, it tends to be pretty close to the 15 to 20% range. Yeah, that's what they ask for. So it's not huge, but if you get, if you're, if you're a server and you get a horrible tip, you don't get a tip, or it's you know, a dollar or whatever, and then you tell friends about that, and they're like, damn, that's horrible. That right there could affect you. Whether or not you, or not you yourself got, so you can tell me I got a whole tip on that table over there for a black folks. So the next day I come to work, you know, I'm like, man, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna kill myself over this table. Yeah. And you can still get a decent tip <laughs> for working that table, but you still have that story in your head, like, well, the next time yeah. I get killed. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I mean, I'm wondering if you could. I mean, that, that made me think about another question in terms of like, you know, if you heard stories about. Giving a bad tip and how that would impact how much you know how much service you would provide or how much or how you perceive um, you know the next tip that you're going to get. Yeah. Because you may not. It's like those uh, <coughs> questions about uh, discrimination. <laughs> the Pew survey did one on this mm -hmm. recently. Like, you know, as people, how much discrimination do you do you perceive? Mm -hmm. So it's like like 55 percent of whites say yes, whites face discrimination. But you ask, Whites, like ten percent, so they personally felt discrimination. Right. But it does, it's not about whether or not you you yourself experienced it. It's whether you've heard about it and you identify with the group that has experienced it. Right. So I wonder if that has an impact as well in terms of the perceptions of you know how much service that I give, given what I what I make it in return. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I I think that you're you're absolutely right. I think part of that though is, is going to be reflected in the interaction between race and workplace culture. <clears throat> so the, these folks who work in these restaurants where they, they're they hearing uh, all this negative thing about black clientele, it right. typically is <clears throat> pertaining to uh, their black clientele's tipping. Right. Right? So they're hearing these stories mm -hmm. in the workplace. And that's a that's an interesting, uh, another uh, caveat that I could add to the, the young lady's question is, is that's a another facet of this research that I find uh, in, in, intriguing is that there is no workplace that I am aware of other than the restaurant industry wherein uh, racism has become so explicitly manifest, right? And again, not all restaurants, but many restaurants. I mean, in the restaurant industry, it's common to hear people talking negatively about black customers, right? And there's no other uh, workplace that I'm aware of where it's common, and, it, and it's because in part, servers are able to embed uh, or couch all these uh, uh, racist sentiments in this economic framework. So it's not about race, it's about tipping, right? And that's a that's classic uh, uh, <coughs> colorblind racism. Right. Hmm? <laughs> Do you feel like it has a lot to do with the fact that they're serving people? That's why the restaurant environment is like why you focused on it more because in the restaurant environment you're actually serving someone versus like retail or like at a store you're not really serving them. Yeah, I think it, yeah, I think that doing research in a retail setting would be uh, it's fascinating and, and it's needed and, and there is a stream of research in that area, but the the the, the dynamics are are just so different than the the restaurant industry. There's a uh, the, so the processes themselves would, would be different. So, yeah, I think that that, that would be interesting to, to, to look at. What are the processes that lead to discrimination in retail settings? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.